So one of the things that can be quite confusing is this very old fashioned rule, the postal acceptance rule. Now this did my head in in the early 80s when I was studying law and it was a little bit more relevant than it is today. Now having been in practice for a very long time, um, it is very, very rare for anybody to do anything in a contract sense by post these days. Send somebody a written offer in the post and then await their reply by return. It's just something that didn't doesn't happen. Um, but it is important to understand the rule. The first thing that's important to understand is that the postal acceptance rule is an exception to the general rule. So the general overriding rule is if there is um, a communication, um, the, communica uh, the contract is made at the time that acceptance is communicated and the place that it's actually received. But the post, is, if, if acceptance is communicated by post, then that's dealt with in a slightly different way. So it's a very old case, 1818, Adams and Lindsell. I have t trouble pronouncing Lind cell for some reason. So on the 2nd of September, Mr. Lindsell offered to sell some wool to Mr. Adams and said, I need your reply by post. Mr. Adams got the letter on the 5th of September. It was wrongly addressed. Same day, he sent a letter to Mr. Linsdell accepting the offer, which arrived on the 9th. But Linsdell had given up waiting by that stage and he'd sold the wool to somebody else on the 8th. So he was in this tricky situation where he's got a contract to sell wool with whoever it is that he sold it to on the 8th. And then if that was a valid acceptance of his offer, because he never withdrew it, then he's got two contracts to sell the same wool. The court held that acceptance occurred on the 5th of September because the, court, the, the offer itself required reply by post and that it's an exception to the general rule. So the common law says that the postal rule is an exception and that an agreement is made at the point in time when a letter goes in the letterbox. So it is deemed to be received by the offeror at the point in time when it is posted, even though clearly it's not actually received until some later time. Now, one of the things we're going to be doing a little bit later on is looking at some agreements, so some uh, forms of agreement that um, are commonly in use. So your second assignment, you'll get to go into the Encyclopedia of Forms and Precedents and make some decisions and some recommendations for a client about terms that you might go in use in an agreement. When you're trawling around there, and you can, you can get a head start on it if you want to and have a look any time, they're easy to find, uh, you will notice that most agreements have, usually will have a provision in them that talk about notices. So this is the point in time when you've got an agreement. And they will often say that if one party sends the other person a, no a party a notice, so a notice saying you've defaulted under this agreement or we're changing the name of the person you have to communicate with or who you can take acceptance uh, instructions from, that sort of thing, that that communication will be deemed to re be received at a particular point in time. And the reason that people do that is to get around this original rule. So it's usual to say, if you send me something by post, it's deemed to be received three business days after you send it to me. And a business day will be defined as between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. on a day that banks are open in the place that we are doing business. Um, I wonder how that's going to work in the next couple of months, actually, because I don't know how that's all going to work. Um, often they will say because the general rule is if you have a, if a, a instantaneous communication, uh, so if I um, accept your offer verbally, then the contract is made at the time and at the place that I actually said the thing and you heard it. If 
I make the uh, acceptance over the phone or using some kind of electronic communication device, email, etc. It's made at the time and at the place that you receive it. That's the general rule. The Electronic Communication Act matches that. Where that gets a little bit tricky, and I better have a slide about it, email can be a little bit tricky because the Act says that it's the point in time when you actually receive a communication is the point in time when it's capable of retrieval by you from the relevant server. So, if I accept something by email or Facebook instant message or something like that, WhatsApp, if it's sitting there and unread by you, that doesn't matter. Once it's capable of you retrieving it, even if you haven't turned your computer on, you're deemed to have received it. So again, in the absence of the parties agreeing anything else. So if an offer says you can respond to this by email and your email will be deemed, but any communication you send to me electronically will be deemed to be received um, during business hours or when I actually receive it and you get a receipt tag, so at the time that you get the receipt tag, then we can vary what the underlying rule is. But in the absence of the parties specifying something different, then the rule is at the point in time when they could do it. So for those of you who struggled a bit with Zeta and Susanna, part of the issue in that discussion board question was because it was from memory there's an acceptance that comes through that isn't read. Or it might have been a withdrawal. Actually the offer is withdrawn but it isn't read. So was that actually communicated? Because it was an electronic communication, it deemed to have been received at the point in time when it was capable of being retrieved. Okay, we've got half an hour left. I'd normally give you two short breaks, but I just seem to have not really had a flow here at all, I think, because I'm a bit aware that the people are sitting at home. Is everybody good? You okay? And I'll try and get us finished in the next 20 minutes or so and then just finish a bit before. Tiffany, can I help you? Okay, that's a really interesting question. What do other people think? So, oh, sorry, those of you at home who want to play along, think about this. What if somebody says, that looks great, I'm looking forward to signing that, that offer tomorrow, is that an acceptance? I've got a rough show of hands here. Holly, you've got something to say? I'm just It's always going to depend on the facts. So the test is going to be objective, right? What would a reasonable person think based on all of the knowledge of everything, you know, having the same knowledge and, and seeing what the situation is? So depending on what it is, so in a scenario where you and I have been negotiating a massive deal over the last however many months and you get to the end there and you say, absolutely, that is fantastic. Um, I'm really looking forward for this being over. I think we've reached agreement. We'll sign it tomorrow. Shake my hand and go away. In the absence of anything else in the agreement that might say, so the document that we've reached might actually say, there's no agreement until both parties have signed. That is quite a common clause to have an agreement, but let's just assume there isn't. I would think objectively, we probably do have an agreement. And Masters and Cameron would say that actually the signing is really, that's the last thing. So, you know, it turns out that there's plague and pestilence and nobody can go into the office to sign the agreement that following day. Chances are we've got an agreement anyway. However, if we've just met today and I've thrown, you know, I'm going to offer that clicker that I'm now putting safely in my pocket, my prize for today, and it's like, I so said, this is such a great clicker you know, I'll sell it to you for a million dollars and you say to me, that sounds great, Kath, I'll come back with the cash tomorrow and we'll sign a deal then. 
I don't think anybody is a reasonably going to think that that's the case. Or, shall we say, a more reasonable example, you go to a used car yard. Sometimes it's just easier to say, yeah, I'll be back tomorrow than it is to just keep on going, yeah, 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 yeah I'll send you, I'll send, you give me your card, I'll send you an email. So, again, it's always going to depend on the circumstances. Mm -hmm.